Well hidden in the Atlantic Ocean lies a little-known group of islands, a rough natural paradise. Saint-Pierre et Miquelon is the last piece of France in North America. A small archipelago with an eventful history, inhabited by a proud seafaring people who preserve their Basque traditions. Islands between North America and France and a people between tradition and modernity. Arrival in the port city of Saint-Pierre, the capital of the archipelago of Saint-Pierre et Miquelon. It is summer in the French overseas territory. It is the week of the Fête Basque, the great Basque festival celebrated once a year. The brothers Dimitri and Cédric Choy are true saint pierre born and raised on the archipelago. Right now, they are on their way to the central square in town, the Fronton. Here they play pelota, the most popular sport on the island. Seamen from the Basque country brought the game here. It was they who built the Fronton in 1906. This is one of the variants which is played outdoors, on the playing field called cancha. The most important one here on Saint-Pierre is called paleta gomplaine, with these wooden bats. The goal is to hit the ball over the horizontal line. And the ball must not fall into the fields that you see here on both sides. And on the serve, the ball must go over this line. Pelota is played in a similar way to squash. The teams take turns hitting the ball against the bounce wall. If the ball bounces twice or lands out of bounds, the point is lost. To be a good player, you need a good sense of balance. You have to be fast. It doesn't take much strength in the arms. It's mostly a matter of technique. You have to play with foresight because it's very fast and you notice immediately if you're not in shape. The two brothers have been playing since childhood and are considered favourites for the cup, which is played once a year. They have successfully completed the preliminary round, but there is still a long way to go before they reach the final at the Fête Basque. It's an exciting tournament and very demanding. Winning here is the greatest thing for the Pelotari. Dimitri already has loyal fans. His wife and children attend every game. Saint-Pierre et Miquelon is located in the Northwest Atlantic Ocean and only 25 kilometers away from the Canadian province of Newfoundland. The archipelago consists of the main island of Saint-Pierre with the port city of the same name. Most of the nearly 6,000 inhabitants live here. Only a few hundred people live on the large double island of miquelon langlade The village of Miquelon on the double island here, two horsewomen set off for the south. Steffi and Justine are good friends. They like to spend their free time together on the back of their horses. In summer, the animals live on the island of Langlade. I just want to make sure they are OK. Are the hooves OK or are they injured? We took some treats to lure the horses, also some grain, because my horse is a bit scared when you approach it. The herds are constantly moving. 
depending on the food, time of day and weather. The search for the horses begins. From Miquelong, only one road leads to the south, across a narrow spit of land that connects the two parts of the island. On the 200 square kilometer island, the horses can move completely freely. The herd could be anywhere now. Fortunately, Stevi knows the animal's favorite places. Finally, the first horses are in sight. But are they the right ones? Which horse is this? This is Saga. There are horses of a friend and two of people from Saint-Pierre. Ours are not there. Maybe they are at the other places, further towards Langlade. If we don't find them, I'll be disappointed. The weather is so nice and I would love to go for a ride. Back to Saint-Pierre, where the ferry is just arriving. It runs once a day between the mainland and the archipelago, from Canada to France in just one and a half hours. To leave the islands and see something of the world, that is the wish of many young saint Pierres. Marie, 21, is studying marine biology and has returned to her home country to work. Already next year, she wants to go to the French mainland to do her master's degree in La Rochelle. The big question is whether to return to Saint-Pierre in Miquelon after graduation to live here later. The archipelago suffers a little from this, that especially the young people leave and don't always come back. I think the older people are a little worried about that. At the Maison Basque, the Basque Cultural Association, Marie practices with the dance group Orokbat. She recently joined the association because she wants to learn traditional dances from the Basque country. It looks easier than it is. Natalie is the president and trainer. She is whipping the troupe into shape because the dancers will be making a grand entrance at the Basque Festival. Some have been dancing for a long time, others are brand new and still have to find their feet. For Marie too, Basque dances are new territory. It is difficult to remember everything because there are many small steps. You can't forget any step. That is complicated. Everything happens with the feet. There are many jumps. The Basque dancer always wants to go high. Many complicated steps and a whole series of figures. When I joined the group, there was still a choreographer from the Basque country who taught dances. Since I took over the group, I try to teach the others. Sometimes I also research dances on the internet and watch YouTube videos. I try to learn them myself and then show them to the others. Je vais chercher les danses et je les regarde, je les étudie et j'essaye de les de les apprendre moi-même et de les transmettre aussi. For Marie, the Fête Basque will be her first public performance. 
Le fait qu'on va être en costume. We will perform in costumes and a crowd of people will watch us. Totalement autour de nous à nous regarder. That is a big difference. Le fait qu'on va tout enchaîner. We will dance all the dances one after the other. Le spectacle va durer au total, mais ça va être assez. No idea how long the performance will last, but it will be sporty. Ça va être sportif, ouais. Tourists from neighboring Canada can expect a different world in Saint-Pierre, a unique mixture of North America and France. In the morning, the smell of freshly baked baguettes and éclairs emanates from the bakeries here. In the supermarkets, wine from Alsace, cheese from Brittany, all shipped in from mainland France. Of course, we pay with the euro. The ancestors of the saint pierreis are descended from Bretons, Normans, but above all, Basques. They started coming to the island in the 16th century, attracted by the almost inexhaustible supply of cod off Newfoundland. Then large fishing trawlers from all over the world came into the waters and the small wooden boats of the saint pierreis could not compete with them. In 1993, the collapse, the cod disappeared and fishing was limited. Since then, the fishery has been on the ground. The colourful salt pans at the harbour are a reminder of the golden days of fishing. Fish was preserved here. Today, they are the meeting place for Yannick and his friends. They call themselves the Zigotos, the crazy ones. The dories are the traditional fishing boats on Saint-Pierre et Miquelon that were used to catch cod for centuries. Of the more than 500 that once existed, only nine boats remain. Yannick and the Zigotos are now restoring dories so that the knowledge of how the wooden boats were built is not lost. Fishing used to be good. We had money. But today we don't export anything anymore. A few lobsters may be a little fish, but very little. If we didn't have France or Canada or Europe, people wouldn't be able to live here, because all the money comes from the European Union. In recent years, tourism has developed. It could be a new perspective for the archipelago. The dories play an important role in this. They are the symbol of Saint-Pierre et Miquelon and very popular with tourists. We must preserve the Basque tradition and the cigotos. We must guard it all. The rowing, the dories, it's all we have. The sea is our whole life. In the waters off Saint-Pierre, you can also meet strange creatures, mola mola or moonfish. Weighing up to two tons, they are among the heaviest bony fish in the world. Out here, the molipa is also out for lobster. Fisherwoman Agatha bought the boat with her partner last year. Johan is preparing bait for the fish traps. Herring is a very fatty fish that spreads oil and strong odors in the water. This is what lobsters like, it seems. We have 200 fish traps, 100 in the west and 100 in the east. There are about 40 left, which we will take out of the water today. 
This is where we arrive, and these are all the fish traps we have left. We will get them out today. Agada came to Saint-Pierre on a sailing trip, fell in love with Johan and stayed. It is their first season together as fishermen. Each trip is a journey into the unknown. Will they catch enough to cover expenses or will their first season be their last? They are already feeling the rising price of fuel and the cost of maintaining the boat. In the beginning, we really caught little, so little that we were on the verge of profitability. That is, we did not even recover the money for gasoline and the bait. We need to catch at least 50 kilos of lobster, more like 100 kilos. At 100, it gets interesting. Since the collapse of the cod fishery, catching snow crabs and lobsters has been the main business for many fishermen. Just 10 boats with fishing licenses are out this year. In the wild, lobsters can live to be very old. 80 or 100 years are not uncommon. The fat one is a male. You can tell by the large claws. He will be about 8 to 10 years old. We just caught the first trap, and it wasn't bad. Normally we are happy with one or two lobsters. Now we had five or six, so that's a good sign. With new bait, the fish trap is cast out again. It is easy to find via a GPS transmitter in the buoy. The south of the double island Miquelon Langlade is hardly inhabited. It is the realm of horses. Steffi has come across a herd. Here could also be her horse. Mine is called Arizona, seven years old, a horse to fall in love with. Mares often have a difficult character, but mine is really lovable. Still, a few treats can't hurt. Look, they are both together. In the past, there were many farms. On them, you needed the horses for work. Today, the horses are simply a symbol of freedom. We can use the space we have here, and ultimately, it is also a passion. Five hundred years ago, French settlers brought horses to the archipelago. There are still some descendants of those original herds living here today. At the last count in 2007, there were just under 170 animals on the island. Whether the Miquelon horse is a separate breed is still under investigation. Its close relative is the Canadian horse. They rediscover their wild character. They are not in an enclosure. They are simply free. Miquelon cannot be reached directly from the mainland, but only by ferry from Saint-Pierre. For chef Hervé Rioult, 
This remoteness is just what he needs. 20 years ago, he escaped the hustle and bustle of Paris and came here. Today, he runs the Mayonnaise, one of three restaurants in Miquelon. Mio, can you please give me the booklet with the reservations? There is no fixed menu. In the morning, Hervé decides what's on the table. So, Thursday. Thursday, ah, yes, Thursday. Today at noon, we're fully booked, 25 reservations. And tonight, too. That shows that things are going quite well on Miquelon, after all. We cook a lot with fresh products, but a fresh delivery doesn't arrive here every day. So we work with the local fishermen, use whatever is available here. You basically never know what you're going to eat. The search for the menu of the day takes Hervé to the port of Miquelon. Hello, Calito. What do you have for say? I have lobster if you want. Let's go. Pull. Here we go. I'll pull on anything you want, dear. On Miquelon, food has to be shipped in at great expense. When the weather is bad, the island sometimes cannot be reached for days. Then Hervé has to make do with what Miquelon has to offer. From the heads we make a bisque, the body we keep for lasagna, and the tails we fry in garlic. Come, choose what you want. Okay, the blue one's there. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. He is a good friend and quite a joker but a very good cook. I think he's the best cook in the whole archipelago. He has a golden touch. No matter what you give him, he will make you a dish out of it. That's why so many people come to his restaurant. At the Flora des Cours farm on the outskirts of Miquelon, Hervé looks for fresh vegetables. Cindy! Hey, how are you? Cindy! Hello, Hervé. How are you? Anything nice you got for my bistro? I can offer you small red cocktail tomatoes. And yellow gooster tomatoes to add a bit of colour to your plate. The soil on Miquelon is not very fertile, and Cindy, the former bank director, is the only one who successfully grows vegetables here. I use only natural fertilizers, mainly seaweed that washes up on our shores in winter. Also, poultry droppings from a neighboring farm. When it comes to that certain something on the plate, Hervé trusts his friend Pierrick. He knows all about edible flowers and grows the plants in his garden. The petals do not have much flavor, but the pistil with pollen does. This is black radish. You can use the flower as a decoration or eat it. The beauty of the radish is that you don't have to eat the root. You let it rise instead and use the pods. Go ahead and try it. Tastes like radishes. Super good. Pierrick is originally from Brittany. In his old homeland, people like to cook with a plant that only thrives on salt marshes, salicornia, also called quella. It is rare on the archipelago. Pierrick knows the only places where it grows. Yes, eat it. It's free. <laughs> Salicornia is a plant, not an alga. It grows on the mudflats, where it is regularly washed by the tide. 
goes well with fish, but also with white meat. You can use them raw or cook like beans with butter and garlic. Let's see what we do with all this stuff, all made in Miquelon, and now full throttle. On the Molipa, Agada and Johan pick up the last lobster traps. The season is coming to an end. In late summer, the lobsters begin to change their shells. Then they are soft and hard to sell. Johan measures the size of the animals with a measuring stick. I have only two soft ones here. We throw the little ones back so they have time to reproduce and also to protect the stock. It's too small. At the moment, a kilo of lobster is around 12 euros. This always depends on the price in Newfoundland, where a part is sold. But the majority ends up in the kitchens of local restaurants. People coming from France and tourists like to eat it because it is cheap compared to Europe. Will today's catch cover the costs, or will Agatha and Johan make a loss? We hope to catch many today because there is a big tide and therefore many lobsters. And it worked. I guess we got 70 or 80 kilograms, which is pretty good. Agata is pregnant and will have a baby daughter in winter. She wants to continue fishing then, even if the big money is not waiting here. It was a voluntary step because we like it and because it is my profession. There is room here for 10 small boats to live on, but no room to build a large fishing industry. But there are still opportunities for medium-sized fishing. For me and Johan, at the moment, it's just about continuing to fish like this. Back to Saint-Pierre. On the fronton, the next round of the Pelota tournament is underway. Dimitri and Cedric are facing an important hurdle, the qualification for the semi-finals. They have tough opponents. Zabi is the local Pelota coach and has enlisted the help of his cousin, who has travelled from the Basque country for the tournament. Hard, it's very hard. <sighs> Pelota was even Olympic once, at the Paris Games in 1900. Cedric's shot went out of bounds. A narrow victory for the brothers. They made it to the semi-finals. But is that enough for the trophy? We hope to get to the final, but before that, the semi-final. It's not going to get any easier now. But we won three out of three. It looks quite good. The dancers of the Oroch Bat continue to rehearse. Askindarak is the name of the dance, named after the inhabitants of Askain, a community in the Pyrenees. 
Many members of the association have Basque roots, which they remember fondly. Orokbat has been danced in the club since the 1960s. There are also male dancers, but the women are clearly in the majority. The steps are right, so the Basque festival can come. Back to Miquelon. In the restaurant Mayonnaise Chef, Hervé starts with the menu of the day. We make the lobster that Carlos caught. It has already been cooked, so it can rest. We're going to make it with salicornia and ricard. Ricard, that's a brand of pastis. Then we have red cabbage, which comes from barachois. Oyster leaves and a lot of herbs that we collected, and the flowers from Pierrick. Grenadine to sweeten and soften the acidity. We have our own cuisine. It's mixed with this French side, the Basque, the Breton, the Norm. And what exists in Canada, and that's probably the most difficult part for us. Hervé serves upscale cuisine at an affordable price. A meal with him costs between 17 and 30 euros. Now Salicornia. Oops. With glasses you see better, eh? Bonjour, monsieur, dame. Bonjour. Merci. Bon appétit. Did you see? He used salicornia. Really tasty. I've never tried it. You can taste the salicornia very well, the nasturtium, the cabbage. It is not one of the traditional recipes usually found in the archipelago. One is surprised by flavours. We keep our traditions, that's clear. But we're still evolving. I have been here for 20 years. I see that Miquelon and Saint-Pierre are changing at the moment. That also has to do with the young people who are trying out new things. A few kilometres off Saint-Pierre lies the uninhabited fishing island Ile aux Marines. Rémy Girardin is currently delivering building materials to the island. The retiree has a vacation home on the water and spends the summer renovating it. The fact that Remy's old fishing house is still standing is pure luck. Last year, unfortunately, we had a fire. The house caught fire and the whole interior was destroyed. This year, it will be rebuilt. It's not easy to keep the houses in good shape. There are no protective trees and the old wood is permanently exposed to wind and salt water. You mustn't be reluctant to carry things sometimes. The terrain is quite steep and uneven. And we don't have any mechanical equipment, so we carry everything by hand. After the fire, the shock was deep. But Remy was determined not to give up his house. Now everything has to be completely renovated. On the Ilo Marine, 
That means a lot of manual labour. There are no stores here and no electricity. Every screw has to be brought over by boat. Time seems to have stood still here. A fort from the 1850s is a reminder of the conflicts between England and France that were fought out on the archipelago. At its peak, more than 600 people lived here from cod fishing. The last residents moved to Saint-Pierre in the 1960s, where there were more jobs, hospitals and electricity. Today, the houses are used as vacation homes. They are the last reminder of their original inhabitants, who were called Pierre Rouge, the Red Feet. Fishermen at that time fished with bare feet or in boots. The cold seawater made their feet red. That's at least one theory. Remy is a descendant of the Pied Rouge. His grandmother was born here. This is another reason why he feels connected to the island. It's not far from Saint-Pierre, but once you get there, everything is completely different. There are no cars, no roads. A really great feeling of freedom. With a solar system, Remy wants to become more independent and speed up the renovation. No, only the panels need to be wired and connected. Otherwise, everything is installed. Somewhere here was the junction box for the cables, wasn't it? It seems I won't be able to finish this because I still need a junction box. I don't have it, so I have to go to Saint-Pierre to get the missing material. But now there's no ferry anymore. Well, no problem. It will probably take some time until the house is habitable again. Here the clocks tick a little differently. I miss my granddaughters running around in the grass here. Every day they ask me when we will sleep on Ile aux Marins. Now it won't be long. On Saint-Pierre, the day of the big Fête Basque begins. The square at the Fronton has turned into a small folk festival. Basque culture is celebrated with songs and typical dishes from the Basque country. Agata and Johan have also taken the day off especially popular with young and old. The games of strength with the soaring contest, hay bale throwing and the big tug of war. Dimitri and Cedric have retired to the cabin to prepare for the last game. They made it to the final and now they want to get the trophy as well. We are a bit tense because we can't wait for the final. That's what we look forward to every year, this tournament at the Fed Basque. So excited, but a positive excitement. For the residents who didn't make it to the front on, the game will be broadcast on the local television station. The brothers are relying on the tactics that have already taken them to the finals. Dimitri plays at the back, while the nimble Cedric charges ahead. Cedric is very strong up front. He can intercept the ball, he can attack or he can bring it back. He's very versatile. Pelota is one of the fastest ball sports. Speeds of over 300 kilometers an hour are possible. Not without danger for the spectators. It's on, a good game. 
Comme d'habitude. Upstairs in the clubhouse, Marie and the dancers prepare for their performance. Right now, the final preparations for the props and the costumes are going on. I have forgotten a few things, but we are trying to focus. For the last time, they go over the steps in their heads. Now I am very euphoric. I feel like dancing and showing everything we have learned all year. I am looking forward to performing now. Match ball on the front on. The score is 34 to 17 for White. The trophy is within reach for Cedric and Dimitri. It's out of reach. The brothers have really done it. The winners will be celebrated later, dancing first. After the summer, Marie will leave the island and go to Europe. When she will return, she does not know yet but Saint-Pierre will remain her home. I think it's important to experience something different and open up to the world. We learn something from outside and come back to bring our experience here. Eight different dances are performed one after the other during the performance. The Zinta dancer is danced around a wooden pole the ribbons have the colours of the Basque flag, green, white and red. My favourite dance is the one with the big pole, where we all dance in a circle. I like that one the best. Natalie is exhausted, but happy. I saw a few people trying to dance the steps at the same time as us. I hope some will join the group in the winter, so there will be more of us next year. The festival is like a big family that gets together for a week to celebrate Basque culture. This is more important than Canadian culture. We are French, and in my opinion, we will remain so. We will always remain so. The festival is slowly coming to an end. Three times. As long as the saint pierre keep their traditions, there will be the Fête Basque, here on Saint-Pierre-et-Miquelon.